We're here at the wonderful location, one of the top legendary studios here in Miami. And uh, we're here at the second annual Launch Music Awards. Uh, our award show is a little bit different than a lot of award shows because we're, we're mainly like honoring that person. So it's mainly like an honoring award show, you know? So we wanted to take time and honor a legend. Uh, we gave him the Game Changer Award because we feel that he changes the game with Latin music and and just streamlining it and making it more palatable for like, you know, all of us to vibe to it and listen to his energy that he has. Like, you know what I'm saying? He has great energy. He has amazing, just everything about him just says game changer to me. I've met Mr. Tito Puente Jr. so many different occasions. He knows my family. He knows my, my father inner circle. He knows so much about me and I, I've watched so many different things about his father and I've seen him just take that legacy and just keep it going with concerts and shows here locally in Miami and all over the globe, you know? So I want to introduce you to Tito Puente Jr. My brother, how you What's doing, man? Baby? Good to see you, Good man. to see love, you, man. Love, Good to love, see love, you. Love, love, love. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for uh, giving me this great honor. Definitely, this man. So cool. Definitely, man. You have um, changed the game, and I know you grew up in a legendary family. Um, tell me, like, what was that feeling? Did you? When did you realize uh, who your dad really, really was? Yeah, that was probably a question I should be asking you. <laughs> <laughs> but I get that question a lot when yeah. my, uh, my father was a king of Latin music, still yeah. is. Yes. Um, ambassador of Latin music worldwide, along with Celia Cruz. And uh, just an amazing uh, career, 50-year career. Wow. 186 albums. Uh, 186 albums. 186 albums, man. I think there's probably even more. There's so many unreleased <laughs> material and master tapes yes. everywhere. But uh, Tito Puente was really uh, incredible. I realized that my father was popular when I went to a Menudo concert. Remember Menudo, Menudo? wow. Yeah. I was about maybe 11 or 10 years old at Madison yeah. Square Garden. Yeah. And Menudo was performing. My sister was a fan. And, and my father took us. And we were in the front row. And Menudo said, stop the concert. And said, Con ustedes. Hey, everybody. Tito Puente is here. <laughs> and the entire arena, it must have been 20,000 screaming girls were like oh my god and yeah. that was the end of the menudo concert yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it was all about tito puente that's when i realized who he was yeah why is everybody going crazy for this gray-haired old man yeah and he was the king yeah the pope latin the pope. pope yes man he always latin music pope. i see him always he carried himself very well yeah like with 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 dignity i've every footage i see of him he's always yeah, just, dressed uh, to the tees. Yeah, he's got to thank my mother. Thank my mother for that. <laughs> yeah, well, every good man always has a good woman. That's man. right. You know that's what I'm right. saying? So how's Mom Dukes? Mom's good. Mom's okay. good up in New York. She okay. runs the whole, you know, estate of Puente, and wow. uh, we got some great things coming. Definitely, we're going to be speaking about my father in the future, about maybe a biopic, oh, documentary man. series. That's big. That story has to be told. That story you know? has to be told, yeah. man. What is what is so originally the family's from New York and then you got you guys came to Miami or how did that work? How yeah, originally we're born and raised in New York. My father's from Spanish Harlem. Okay. East Harlem and uh, a lot of conglomerate of black and Hispanic people from from Apollo all the way down to yeah. 110th Street <laughs> was where my father's hood was. Yeah. And I was born in New York City as well. I moved down here about maybe 20 some odd years ago, right? Yeah. Right after uh, the hurricane in Andrew. Okay. And uh, it was just, I never turned back. I wow. love South Florida. South Florida is my home now. Now. And South Florida loves you, man. I can tell by the, uh, your bookings. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love South Florida. I love the yeah. people here. I love your father, what he's done. Yeah. Um, he was. This was one of the first places I actually came and recorded. So it's like amazing to be here again. Wow. And this is uh, legendary. So, um, but it was great. It was great seeing my father uh, and traveling with him. That's yeah. really what was the greatest part about being his son. Oh wow. Traveling around the planet, seeing a. Uh, every continent except Antarctica, which we wanted to go to, uh, but just amazing, amazing yeah. opportunity to be his kid. And, yeah. and uh, you know how it is, man. Yeah. We, we, we're in the same. Definitely, we, definitely. You know? How is it like carrying the torch? Is it pressure? Like just, just you know, when they in, in, when they introduce your name, yeah. it's just it's the same name, just the junior. Yeah. Is it? Is it yeah. like? It, do you feel that? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Like, do you your heart starts yeah. beating, or like, what is that feeling? Of that is, is it is it good pressure? Is it bad pressure? Or do you balance it? Or I think when we were younger, we probably felt the pressure a little bit more. Yes. 
um, having the accolades. I think the word is called nepotism. Okay. To be the son or the daughter of someone who's very popular and famous. But as I'm now, I'm 50 years old. Wow. Um, I've come into, and I have children now too, and guess what? And I you, look, my, you, you look a good 50. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. No white hair yet, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a son, Tito Puente Jr. Jr. the third. So I, I threw the pressure on him. <laughs> so they say talent skips a generation, so he'll do okay, I hope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's great. It's great. Um, now that I've come to be older and a parent myself, yes. I know the pressures that my children will have. But I always guide them to the way that they want to do whatever they want to do in their future, yeah. whether it be not in the music industry. Yeah. I encourage them to do whatever they choose in this planet. Yeah. I think they're, they're, they're fantastic kids. And when I was their age, 14, 15 years old, I was kind of playing rock music and heavy metal. Yeah. So I was I was playing drum set. Yeah. So I really didn't care for mambo music. But yeah, now, yeah, yeah. as I grew into it, I caught that clave rhythm and I got into my Latin roots. And, yeah. And that's where I started uh, Yeah, it, it just came it. at the end. And when I see you, man, like... Yeah. Um, you performed at the Overtown Festival. We did it with you. Oh, uh, we performed it. over there, uh, Headliner. And yeah. uh, Keon Hardiman's uh, mm -hmm. festival was very great. Free show for the, uh, the public. But I seen when you went up there, I seen the people dancing. And that yeah. was an all urban black audience that's right and man it's, it's like they knew the records they yeah. they felt the vibe my father you... was an honorary brother because uh, <laughs> he was born in harlem <laughs> new york <laughs> uh but tito puente has that uh jazz vibe to him okay yes i and feel that it's like i feel like a little it's latin and yes. jazz music okay. and uh the black community has always embraced tito puente yeah along because he's playing afro-cuban music yeah and uh of course with celia cruz being the afro-cuban woman she was yeah. uh, it really brought cultures and creeds and people and, and just an array of people together. Yeah. And you wouldn't believe it, but my father did a lot more jazz festivals yeah. than he did Latin festivals yeah. throughout his uh, his career. Wow. So, See, we're, 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 me, we were just discussing that. Yeah. So Jazz in the Gardens, Miami Gardens. That's right. Hey. Bring some mambo there. There you go. There you go, <laughs> Jazz in the Gardens. Yeah, yeah. You know, Rodney Harris, the new mayor. Yeah. He's right there. You know, he'll bring that flavor. Mm -hmm. But man, um, I just, oh man, it's just so many things I want to talk to you about, of man. Course, you know, because when you say the, da the name Game Changer, your family, you are such a game changer, man. And it's just, I love the balance you've been doing. I love how you've been keeping the music alive. What's going on? with Tito Puente Jr. musically. Wow, I have so much happening. Well, just released a new single and the new album comes out uh, in June 24th. Okay. The new single is called Veinte Años. Veinte Años. 20 year anniversary. My father passed away 20 years ago last year. Wow. But then we went through the whole, the whole COVID. The so you didn't get a COVID chance to really highlight to release it. it. Is it and 21st? It, it, so, it, so this year is the 21st anniversary. What's so crazy, uh, we so, work, we're working with Trina and she's celebrating 21, 21 years, years. years that's too. true that's, that's right wow yeah that's no, a number right there i must go play that lotto or something right 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 that was a great year 21 i, was, I remember i was 21 <laughs> but it was and not only was my birthday yeah. but it was also the 21st anniversary so we put out a record called 20 años okay it's a fantastic record of 10 classic tito puente tracks i took uh people that work with my father in the studio okay and every decade so from the 1950s 60s wow 70s, 80s. so you plan this out good yeah, yeah so i got tony vega jose beto canario domingo quinones these are all very popular artists in the Latin music world. Yeah. Pete Escovito and the queen of percussion, Sheila E, is on the what? album. I'm so excited <laughs> to have her on the record. Yeah. She, of course, is a you know multi-platinum uh, artist. Yeah. And, um, and she's the goddaughter of my father, Tito Puente. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yes. Wow. Yeah, honorary goddaughter. So he and really put, her, put his hand on yes, her. Yes, Pete Escovito and her father uh, worked with my father for many years. And Sheila is just fantastic. So yeah. thank you, Sheila, for being on the record. And then I got my brother, Ronnie Puente. Yeah. Who's from, uh, he's my older brother. We yeah. finally got to record together. Wow. He's playing the marimba, which is the vibe. Pop, Pops was up there crying, man. Yeah. So Pops was up there just, it was probably rain that day, man. Pops was crying yeah. so much up there, man. It's our tribute to him, and there's yeah. a music video out. You guys can see it on all digital platforms. Yeah. It's called Veinte Años Tito Puente Jr. Man, I love that, yeah. man. We're going to support that, and we're going to put you. that in the clip and show a piece of that, too, and just show a, a couple of your accomplishments and show a couple of your, your dad's accomplishments yeah. also, man. I just... It just it's just mm -hmm. such a big story, man. We're mm -hmm. here, you're watching the Launch Music Awards. It's the second annual. I'm here with Tito Puente Jr. and we'll be right back. Hey, we're back. The second annual Launch Music Awards. I'm here with the Game Changer Award recipient, Tito Puente Jr., man. We're here at the studio having a good time, vibing out, giving some great talks. But let's talk um, performances, man. Let's talk about some of your 
What are your some of your favorite performances that you did, man? Give me your top three, top five. Top you know, three, top five. Well, of course, the ones that were with my father, definitely. Tito Puente, over twenty years ago, we did a, a beautiful concert in uh, Toronto, Canada. Yeah. In a big, uh, it was a big stadium with yeah. Celia Cruz, India, and my father, and I got to share the stage with him. How, how was that set up? You like right next to him, or like how? Yeah, was that? he wouldn't let me play the drums because he was a king. <laughs> so I just grabbed the maracas and I played okay. in the corner or cowbell. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but. Uh, it was great uh, being on stage with him. Yes, and uh, and then traveling around the world with him. I've, I, he asked me to perform with him a few times. I have video of that. My yeah. mother has a lot of that stuff. But um, we went to Indonesia, Japan, mm -hmm. uh, the Far East was just incredible. Wow! And uh, people over there don't even know the language of Latin music or Spanish music, but yeah. they know the the, the sound and the yeah. rhythm and the conga yeah. and the timbale and it makes them dance. Yeah. So that was really something to see. You know, traveling uh, to all parts of this globe and yeah. seeing people that react to Tito Point music yeah. just latin music in general is really amazing so all those concerts were just great and then of course i did one here and i think the biggest crowd i've ever performed for was here at a haitian festival wow that big one that goes down the second Compa. avenue the Compa. Haitian yeah. Compa Fest. yeah man it must have been a hundred thousand people <laughs> in the streets yeah so that was probably like the and largest it was jamming one. They were jamming. They were yeah. did. I had a Zouk band in front of us. Yeah. And then it was a reggae band after us, and yeah. we were doing our mambo right there. Yeah. But they went crazy, and it was amazing to see that. No, no, it's amazing because I yeah. feel like the way you network and you, you're a people person. So it's like if you don't like Tito Puente, it's like maybe something's <laughs> wrong with you. Tito Puente Junior, something wrong with you because yeah. like you're you're such a networker. Every time yeah. I've seen you, it's I been push. love. It's been yeah. handshakes. It's been good vibes, man. Yeah. So I, I want to. Tell me some of your dad's hits, like the name of them. Like, give me, give me. There's so many hits. I mean, yeah. like oh, the ones. 186 yeah. albums, the catalog is so vast. Yeah. But the main ones, of course, that generate uh, people, still people in interest and cover yeah. bands. I've yeah. won cruise ships and I see people playing, of course, Oye Como Va being the one of Oye the most world va. famous songs written. What does that mean? Oye Como This is how it goes. This is how the it rhythm, goes. This is how it goes. Pretty Lady. Okay. The song was written in 1963. Yeah. Uh, it was a B side yeah. from an album that sold maybe 3,000. And copies, and then we thank Carlos Santana yeah. for redoing the song in a rock version in 1971, and yeah. it became a worldwide phenomenal hit. Yeah. Um, Ran Kang Kang, another popular tune, it was on the Mambo King soundtrack. A lot okay. of the Mambo dancers love the, okay. the sound of that one. Then that was written in 1949. Yeah. El Cayuco, um, there's so many uh, other great, great tunes. Um, uh, Juventud de Presente, Balabaratiri. I can go on and on with the, the catalog of Tito Puente, but they yeah. all generate and people still love them. And uh, people still come out to the Mambo dances, and yeah. it's great. It really, when I really noticed uh, 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 when I was, uh, how many people really enjoy Tito Puente music, newer generation, yeah. is throughout the, the COVID thing. And I would see it online. I would see okay, a lot of people like dancing. TikToks, all that. Dancing Tito yeah. Puente music. I said, wow, look at that. And it, it just really yeah. shocked me. Yeah. It shocked our whole family that people were still interested now in Tito Puente music. Now the brand is so strong. Yes. That's why you have to come with that docuseries and yeah. that biopic, man. Because let me tell you something. During COVID, I learned... Like Celia Cruz is on Netflix. Yes. And it was mm -hmm. all in Spanish. And yeah. I watched Every you single got the one. Subtitles there. I watch, and I, I, I don't usually, usually yeah. do that because I'm like, oh my god, subtitles. Yeah, but and it was like maybe 12 episodes. Yeah. And I watched everything. It was great. So I know the fact. I saw the things she went through politically. Yes. I saw the things she went through emotionally. Mm -hmm. I saw the things she went through so much. So I can imagine your father coming yeah. up, being and, a female yeah. with the racism back yeah. then. Everything. My yeah. father d had to deal with that too. Yeah. He used to play down here. He's in the movie. Your dad's he, in yes, the movie. Yes, he is. Your dad's yeah, in. Yeah, I have a yeah, guy the, playing him. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And he was a you know no nonsense guy, and I'm glad that that they, they he did helped that for her. Celia. He helped Celia. Yes, that is correct. He yeah. helped Celia Cruz, and he was one of the first to bring a black Afro-Cuban woman on the stages around the world. Wow. And that was the impact that Tito Puente made. Yeah. So that's why he's an honorary brother, man. Yeah. You know, he made sure that people knew uh, that this woman had the voice, and my father was very, very strong and making sure that Afro-Cuban music was heard around the world. Yeah. Celia was very, very important to her, to his career. As no, a definitely, fact. Yeah. definitely. Like it's like so many things. I see a little bit of Celia and Amara. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, like, I love her. I, I see a little yeah. bit of her in that. I see, mm -hmm. you know, like it's, it's that old, like because I see Amara's mom and Amara mom is yeah. just like she's not playing that. She she wants she's, that type of thing, and and I respect that. Inspirational. Like, you know, Amara's inspirational. I love the new generation that's coming in now. Yeah. they're very inspirational to to respect with respect to Tito Puente, Celia Cruz, and yeah. all the Latin giants yeah. from, from that era. That's why I said you were a game changer because to to understand 
different demographics, yeah. to understand different times in music, mm -hmm. understand all that stuff, you have to be a game changer. Yeah. Because you can't just listen and to understand. Like sometimes when I sit down with my dad and I talk and he's listening to R.I.P. Juice World and listen to all these people, mm -hmm. but he still listens to all his things because he wants to have a level of understanding of what's happening now right like you know what i'm saying like okay you have a kodak black out now right mm -hmm. but when kodak black when i was young i had trick daddy and That's they complained right. about trick daddy what is he right. talking about oh my god he's so mm -hmm. vulgar <laughs> it's just it's just so it's, it's a different time now a different and time. a different era but it's like i'm not saying it's like a it's like a circle mm -hmm. but it kind of almost is yes. you know what i'm saying with music and if you know how to stay relevant you become a game changer yeah. which That's mr right. tito puente jr is man mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I want to thank him so much for coming through, vibing out with us here at the at the Launch Music Awards, the second annual. We're not done with him yet because he's gonna set the timbales up. We're gonna have a little fun and give you little a, a, a little a little a little Latin a little Latin teaching. He's gonna teach me a little little vibes, and this is inspirational to me, man. Cause this is a legend, the blood of a legend, you know. And we have thank to you. keep things like that alive, like you know. So mm -hmm. we'll be back. You're watching the Launch Music Awards, the second annual, and I'm here with Tito Puente Jr., Game Changer recipient, and we're out. Peace. Bye, yeah.